Now let's take a look at the question. The study of morphology, physiology and pathology of the neural system is known as the options are neurology, histology, entomology and cytology. First of all, we need to understand what's morphology, physiology and pathology. Morphology refers to the study of shape, size and structure of different organisms. Physiology is the study of function. Now, the study of function can happen at different levels. It can happen at the cellular level, at the tissue level, organ level or even the organ system level or of the whole body. So, the study of how the body functions at different levels is what is known as physiology. And talking about pathology, Pathology is a branch of medical science where the study is about some diseases, okay? So, uh, when you're studying about diseases, they learn about how the origin of disease might have happened, what causes the disease and all of that, okay? So, in the question, we are asked about what the study of morphology, physiology and pathology, specifically of the neural system known as. It is known as neurology, okay? So... The other options that we had in this question was entomology. Entomology is a branch of zoology that deals with the study of insects. Okay, so they study about their insects and their behavior and how they interact with other biotic and abiotic components. So uh, it also involves the study of the relationship with other organisms, that is the biotic component and their environment, which includes the abiotic component. Okay, next we have histology as one of the options. Histology is the study of tissues. It is a branch of biology that, uh, that deals with the study of tissues. Whereas cytology, we know that a cell is also known as the cyton, right? So cytology is a branch of science that deals with the study of cells. So here we were asked, what is the study of the morphology, physiology and pathology of the neural system known as? Now we know that the correct answer to this question is option A, neurology. Here's a match the following type of question. Match the following from column 1 and column 2. As you can see, under column 1, different types of neurons are given. And under column 2, we have the locations of these different types of neurons. So we have to match each type of neuron with its correct location. Okay, so under column 1, we have bipolar neuron, unipolar neuron and multipolar neuron. And under column 2, we have embryonic stage, cerebral cortex and retina. Okay, so let's first understand what these different types of neurons are. Neurons are uh, cells that are found in our neural system. Okay, so based on how many axons and dendrites are present in each neuron, we can classify them into unipolar, bipolar and multipolar neurons. Okay, so unipolar as the name suggests, uni means one. Right. So, as you can see, this is the cell body or the soma of the neuron. There's just one extension that is arising from the cell body. You can see here, there's just one extension that has further branched into two over here. But from the cell body, there's only one extension that's coming out. That is why this is known as unipolar neuron. Okay. So, these unipolar neurons, they have a cell body with only one axon. They do not have any dendrites. They are found usually in the embryonic stage. Okay, talking about bipolar neurons, I'm pretty sure you're, it's very easy to guess now what bipolar neurons are. Bipolar neurons have two extensions arising from the cell body. There's one dendrite and one axon. Okay, so they have two extensions. One of them is an axon, one of them is the dendrite. So bipolar neurons, they have one axon and one dendrite. They are found in sensory structures like the retina of the eye. That is their location. Talking about multipolar neurons, this is the most abundant type of neuron. Multi means several, right? Multi means many, bi means two, uni is one. So multipolar, there are many extensions arising from the cell body. Though there are many extensions, what I want you to remember is there's just one axon in all three types. The number of axons will not vary. What varies between these different types of neurons is the number of dendrites. In unipolar neuron, there's only one extension and that extension is the axon. In bipolar, there are two extensions. There's one axon and one dendrite. In multipolar, there are several extensions. Of those extensions, there's just one axon and everything else is dendrites. Okay, so you have one axon and there are many dendrites. Okay, 
So multipolar neurons will have one axon and two or more dendrites. These are found in the cerebral cortex. Okay, like I mentioned, this is the most abundant type of neuron. So the bipolar neurons, where are they found? They are found in the retina of the eye. So this would be three. Unipolar neuron, they are found only in the embryonic stages. So B is matched with one. Multipolar neurons, they, they are found in the cerebral cortex. So this is two. So the correct answer will be option A, A3, B1 and C2. I now have an interesting match the following type of question. Let's take a look at it. Under column 1, we have cranial nerves, sacral nerves, coccygeal nerves and cervical nerves. And under column 2, you have 5 pairs, 12 pairs, 8 pairs and 1 pair. So we have to match the each type of nerve with its correct number. Okay? So let me first tell you what these different types of nerves are. There are two different types of nerves classified based on their site of origin, based on where they arise from. If the nerves arise from the brain, then they are known as cranial nerves. We have 12 pairs of cranial nerves. They arise from the brain and in the brain box, in the cranium, there are apertures that are known as foramina. So they come out uh, of the cranium through these apertures that are known as foramina. And we have 31 pairs of spinal nerves that arise from the spinal cord. Okay, so the nerves which develop from the spinal cord are known as spinal nerves. We have 31 pairs of them uh, being present and they are classified into five groups. We have cervical nerves that arise from uh, the spinal cord from the region of our neck. We have eight pairs of them. And then there's the thoracic nerves. We have 12 pairs of thoracic um, nerves, five pairs of lumbar nerves, five pairs of sacral nerves, and one pair of coccygeal nerves. Okay, so let's try to match it now. Cranial nerves, nerves that arise from the brain, we have 12 pairs of them. So A will be matched with 2. Sacral nerves, sacral nerves, we have 5 pairs. Coccygeal nerve, there's just 1 pair. And cervical nerves, from near the neck, we have 8 pairs. So that will be 3. So the correct answer to this question is option C, A2, B1, C4 and D3. Now let's take a look at the question, which of the following statements is or are true? There are four statements provided in the question. Statement 1, somatic neural system transmits impulses from CNS to skeletal muscle. CNS here stands for the central neural system, which includes the brain and the spinal cord. Statement 2, autonomic neural system transmits impulses from the CNS to involuntary organs and smooth muscles. Statement 3, unmyelinated nerve fibers are found in the spinal and the cranial nerves. Statement 4, myelinated nerve fibers are found in autonomous and the somatic neural systems. Okay, so in the statements they have discussed about somatic neural system, autonomic neural system, uh, myelinated and unmyelinated nerve fibers and we have to find out which of these given statements are true. Now let's look at the options. Option A, 1 and 2 only. Option B, statements 1 and 3 only. Option C, 3 and 4 only. Option D, 1, 2 and 4 only. So let's first try to understand what uh, somatic and autonomic neural systems are. So both these are divisions of the peripheral neural system, which is abbreviated as PNS. Okay, so the peripheral neural system includes all of the nerves that arise from the brain and the spinal cord. So under peripheral neural system, we have the autonomic neural system and the somatic neural system. The autonomic neural system controls the involuntary activities of the body, whereas the somatic neural system is in control of the voluntary activities of the body. Okay, so the somatic neural system, it is responsible, like I mentioned, of voluntary control in the body. It transmits impulses from the CNS to the skeletal muscles. Remember, I told you voluntary control. Skeletal muscles are voluntary muscles, right? So we can move them based on our will. So they are voluntary. Um, the somatic neural system transmits impulses from the CNS, brain or the spinal cord, to the skeletal muscles and it controls voluntary movements and actions. Whereas the autonomic neural system, autonomic neural system controls the involuntary actions of the body. It also transmits impulses from the CNS, but the target is involuntary organs like the smooth muscles 
okay, involuntary organs and the smooth muscles. It regulates actions such as heart rate. We do not have control over how uh, a heart rate uh, will vary. And I, I, I mean it is not voluntary, okay, so it's an involuntary thing. Digestion, respiratory rate, pupillary response, dilation and constriction of our pupil, and urination. These are some of the things or actions that are controlled by autonomic neural system. Now, this autonomic neural system is divided into sympathetic neural system and parasympathetic neural system. So, both of these act on the same uh, targets, but they have, usually, they have opposite effects. For example, the nerves uh, in the sympathetic neural system, they increase the heart rate, while as the ones in the parasympathetic neural system, they decrease the heart rate. Another example is uh, sympathetic neural system, it inhibits the secretion of saliva, whereas the parasympathetic uh, neural system, it stimulates the secretion of saliva. Both of these are acting on the salivary glands. One has uh, an inhibitory effect, while the other one has a stimulatory effect, okay? So, that's about somatic and uh, autonomic neural systems. So, the first two statements are correct. Now, we know. Let's talk about the myelinated and the unmyelinated nerve fibers. Now, the myelinated nerve fibers they have something known as myelin sheath. Whereas the unmyelinated nerve fibers, they do not have the myelin sheath. I'll tell you what the myelin sheath is. You can see here in this illustration of the myelinated neuron, there are cells present here, right, in blue. It's uh, represented in blue here. These cells are known as Schwann cells. Okay? So, in myelinated nerve fibers, there are Schwann cells which forms a myelin sheath around the axon and they are found in the spinal and the cranial nerve. So, here's the location of the myelinated nerve fibers. Okay, I'll tell you what exactly myelin sheath is. These Schwann cells uh, are like any other animal cells. They have cytoplasm, they have plasma membrane. What these do is they will form an extension, a very thin extension of the cytoplasm along with the plasma membrane and they will roll around the axon like a carpet. Okay, so that is what is known as myelin sheath. If the Schwann cells located near the axon, if they form that myelin sheath, then the neuron is said to be myelinated. In contrast, in un unmyelinated nerve fibers, what happens is Schwann cells will be present. Schwann cells are present, but they do not form that sheath. They do not roll around the axon like they do in uh, myelinated neurons. In unmyelinated neurons, the Schwann cells will be present, but they form a groove through which the axon will pass. Okay? So, the axon will be present in a groove that is formed by the Schwann cells, whereas in myelinated nerve fibers, the Schwann cells will form the sheath, the myelin sheath. Now, let's look at the location of the unmyelinated nerve fibers. Do these are enclosed by the Schwann cells? They do not form the myelin sheath. They are found in the autonomous and the somatic neural systems. Okay, so this makes the statement 3 and 4 incorrect and the only two correct statements are 1 and 2. The reason why 3 and 4 are incorrect is because unmyelinated nerve fibers, they are not found in the spinal and cranial nerves. They are found in the autonomous and the somatic neural systems. These are found here. Whereas the myelinated nerve fibers are found in the spinal and cranial nerves. The location of these two different types of uh, nerve fibers is interchanged. That is what makes statements 3 and 4 incorrect. In the question, we were asked to find out which of the given statements are true. So, the correct answer to this question is option A. Statement 1 and 2 are correct. Here's an interesting question. Let's take a look at it. The structure within a neuron that contains the neurotransmitter is the, the options are synaptic vesicle, synaptic cleft, myelin sheath, and option D, all of the above. So, uh, Let's just first understand what a synapse is. A synapse is also known as the neuronal junction. Now, this is the junction that is present between different neurons, okay? So, it is a junction between two or more neurons where impulses are passing from one neuron to the others. The neuron from which the impulse is passing is known as the presynaptic neuron. So, presynaptic neuron is a neuron from which information passes. Now, this information from the presynaptic neuron passes through this neuronal junction or the synapse. And the neurons that receive the information from the presynaptic neuron 
are known as post synaptic neurons okay so here's an illustration showing the transmission of nerve impulse from one neuron to the other so this junction here where you have neuron 1 and neuron 2 this junction is known as the synapse okay so you have the axon terminal of the presynaptic neuron here and you have the dendrite of the postsynaptic neuron now the information or the impulse is being transmitted from the presynaptic neuron to the postsynaptic neuron it's very easy synapse is this portion whatever is coming before that is the presynaptic neuron the neuron that's present post the synapse is the postsynaptic neuron okay so the information is passing in this direction uh, so the space that is present the uh, presynaptic neuron and the postsynaptic neuron there's a very small space that is present between these neurons and that is known as the synaptic cleft okay so the space present between the presynaptic and the postsynaptic neuron membranes is called the synaptic cleft so here you can see there is uh, an enlarged view of the uh, synapse here you have the axon terminal of the first neuron or the presynaptic neuron and here you have the dendrite of the postsynaptic neuron now at the terminal of the presynaptic neurons you saw how here or you can even see it here how the axon terminal uh, there are many branches and the at the tip of these axon terminals you have small bulbous enlargement it's slightly enlarged and that is known as the synaptic knob okay so this portion is known as the synaptic knob and here this is what is enlarged okay so this is one enlarged synaptic knob you can see how within the synaptic knob there are these circular structures spherical structures right so these are the synaptic vesicles now these vesicles contain neurotransmitters they are chemicals through which neurons neurons communicate with each other okay so this neurotransmitters are present within these vesicles known as synaptic vesicles and these synaptic vesicles are found in the synaptic knob okay so the knob contains numerous synaptic synaptic vesicles they contain several neurotransmitters such as acetylcholine gamma aminobutyric acid in short it is called gaba or gaba glycine neuropeptides catecholamines etc these are some examples for neurotransmitters so the correct answer to this question is synaptic vesicles one of the options given to this question was myelin sheath myelin sheath is uh, made up of schwann cells and uh, this is found in myelinated neurons these cells are found outside the neuron they're not found within the neuron and also usually they do not have any neurotransmitters present within them so myelin sheath is formed by a type of cells known as schwann cells which are found outside the neuron okay so these are the schwann cells as you can see they are present outside the axon so in the question we were asked which is that structure within a neuron that contains the neurotransmitters so the correct answer to this question is option a synaptic vesicle